I would like to invite the Venezuelan comrade Mar Marcos um, uh, Gar Garcia from the Venezuelan embassy. Well, I, I will give just a few context for understand what's going on in Venezuela, what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, a constituent assembly is just like a kind of parliament organized to establish a new legal framework, a new social agreement. That's what we're looking for right now. Two and a half weeks of campaigning for Venezuela's new constituent assembly begins on July 9th. When President Maduro launched his call on May Day, he emphasized three aims. One, to overcome the current conflict in Venezuela, including the deadlock between the presidency, the parliament, and the judiciary. Two, to restore peace on the streets. Three, to give working people the chance to decide Venezuela's future. Other suggested aims included giving constitutional status to Venezuela's social missions and community councils, as well as more rights for Afro-Venezuelans and greater environmental protection. Some 6,000 candidates will compete for 545 seats in the election on July 30th. These are divided into three categories. One, territorial, 364 seats. That means one representative elected for each municipality with two extra reps for each of Venezuela's 23 state capitals and seven for the capital city, Caracas. Two, indigenous, eight seats. Unlike the other representatives, these will not be elected by secret ballot on July 30th, but according to the indigenous community's own traditions. Three, sectoral, 173 seats. The idea here is to move beyond purely representative democracy and give different sectors of society a chance to choose candidates who will argue for their specific interests. The breakdown of sectors goes like this. Campesinos and fishers, eight representatives. Business people, five representatives. The disabled, five representatives. Students, 24 representatives. Pensioners, 28 representatives. Community councils, 24 representatives. Workers, 79 representatives, divided among nine different areas of employment. The opposition claimed this form of election is unconstitutional, but behind their objection lies both a fear that they have very little support among these popular sectors and a rejection of any sort of direct democracy. Because the agreement we have up to now is not enough to allow the society to function in a normal way. Because a sector of our society believes that they can destroy us and impose some kind of stream right wing government. That's the idea they have. But this has a little bit of an, uh, history, you know. Uh, we have been facing an um, economic war during about three years with attacks in different sectors like the distribution of foods, uh, attacks on the currency, the attack at the level of the international financial system, making it very difficult for us to work at this level. Um, a constant campaign in the international media demonizing Venezuela, telling lies about what's going on in Venezuela, and trying to present the right wing like some kind of angels looking for the heaven in Venezuela. So through this situation, they managed to win the election in, in 2015 at, at the National Assembly. They controlled the National Assembly, and that's the, that was part of the problem because it allowed them to increase the level of violence in the society. Um, at that time, in the National, uh, National Assembly, we believe that, oh, well, they promised, you know, to, to solve the economic situation. They say, they claim in December 2015 that they, they, that, that was the, the last opportunity that Venezuela had to change and overcome the economic situation. The last cue, they say, that was the slogan they used. And when they get into government, the first statement they made in January 2016 was that they, 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 they have a plan of three months at the beginning to oust the president of, the, of Venezuela, who was supposed to be in the government of Venezuela up to 2018. Then they claim, no, no, it's not three months, it's six months. Well, it's not enough six months, maybe one year. And still, you know, they, they haven't managed to do that. 
what happened? The, the situation changed because uh, some sector of the society, you know, they, when we organize the revolution, uh, the, the base, the social base of the revolution is very different. It's not the same people at this with the same level of consciousness. You will have a strong sector, and then you have some people that support you, but they, they are very, very concerned with the economic situation, with access to many things, you know. And we don't have access to, or the possibility to buy things in a normal way, uh, to have access to food in the, in, the, in the way in which any society should have. Those, those, those people get angry. They, they didn't vote in December. We lost about two million votes. And that's why the, the right wing managed to win, to, to, win the, to win the elections. So in January, they claimed, well, they want to ask the government, but they began to legislate. And there are two, two very interesting laws they, they're trying to impose in our society. First, the, the housing law to privatize housing. We have a strong... Uh, social program. We have uh, right now 1,700,000 houses built to the people, totally controlled by the state without any participation of the private sector. Well, they established a law to privatize that, that uh, project. Of course, he, the people living in the public building were, got angry you know, about, about that. Well, that's what's the, main, the, the objective of privatizing this. They, 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 the main objective they have at that time was just to increase the price of land. The law say, textually, the government has six months to make a new agreement with the owner of the land to establish a new price, meaning that the price of housing will increase in more than 100%. Because uh, a pop, uh, public house in Venezuela costs about three, four million bolivars, and the private house may cost 70 million bolivars, 90 million bolivars, 100 million bolivars. The difference is huge. So it wants to to get money from the people through that project that was supposed to help poor people that they have money to pay the, the, the amount of money they want. So that was the, the first project. The second project was the amnesty law. They want to forbid all the crimes they have been committed since 1999 up to now. Because the law said, well, this law will forbid all, all this crime when, the, when the, it is in force. So looking at this situation, President Maduro said, okay, you know, we are interested in discussing the problem of peace with you. So we're going to establish a peace commission with the participation of three former presidents of Spain, Dominican Republic, and Panama. And the Pope, you know, he was involved too, and UNASUR, the Organization of South American Countries. Um, well, let's discuss. We need to discuss what you did in the past and um, see what thing we can pardon, and the price you had to pay for the sin you did in the past. That's more or less the, the logic of the discussion. But they, they didn't like that. It was impossible to make any agreement with them about that. And they came, they decided in, with Trump, you know, when Trump got the power in, in the US in January, they thought that, well, it was the time to, to develop a new phase of the counteroffensive against the Bolivarian Revolution. So they began to organize very strong, strict violence. They have burned up to now about 20 Chavistas on the street. You know, you are walking on the street, somebody getting a cocktail, Molotov, or anything, and you are burned suddenly. Well, <laughs> that's what they do. Um, you know, they, they, the press, the international media said nothing about this, nothing. You don't find information about these things, international media. 20 cases of that which is, you know, horrible. We are not used to that kind of violence in our country. But he says, no, Papa, that I came here to Altamira, and I saw a group of opposition, and he said, look, Negro, you are a chavist, or opposition? Ah, look what we do to the chavist. They started to hit the gun, the gun, and they killed me alive. That doesn't happen. It's horrible, horrible. Y lo que le hicieron a mi hijo, quiero que no quede impune. Por, el, por eso, por decir que es chavista, le, le, me lo quemaron, me lo, me lo hicieron eso. Uh, they don't have enough people to organize barricades on the street. What they did? Well, they received the, the U.S. Congress approved money to promote democracy in Venezuela. And they used this money to pay gangs to participate at the barricades which are very violent. 
together with the, the, the people they have. And they have been fighting in this barricade during many months, in February, but up to now. Today and tomorrow, they claim they're going to do that. So at the same time, the U.S. at the extreme right wing began an, uh, diplomatic offenses against Venezuela and the Organization of American States. You know, they managed to change the government of Brazil with a parliamentary coup against Dilma Rousseff. They won the election in Argentina. Um, they have a government uh, in, in Paraguay, in Peru, extreme right winger in Colombia. Colombia has seven military bases in the, on the border with Venezuela, U.S. bases. Mexico and uh, some Central Americas. Um, well, they, they, they began to discuss about democracy in Venezuela without taking into account what's going on in Mexico with the killing of people and drug traffic and the violence, the civil war in Colombia. They don't care about that. They are very concerned about Venezuela. But uh, Venezuela has been working very hard in the Caribbean region with all these uh, countries with uh, projects uh, in the framework of ALBA to cooperate with those countries with energy that is very expensive for them. And we, you know, we give them energy in a, with a program that allow them to pay half of the cost of energy and the other half, we gave them a period of 25 years. They only, they only had to pay interest. And with that money, they can de develop social programs in their countries. So, <laughs> the U.S. organized in 2016 two meetings in Washington, D.C., with all this country, telling them, we, you know, we need to develop a new scheme of energy in that area. It's not good that scheme you have. You need so, we need something new. Um, you, you know, the Caribbean people know what they talk about. They're talking about transnational, what the situation they had before, where they, the islands were very poor because they, all they have, they paid the energy. And the energy were an international or transnational company from the U.S. So... It's, it makes it quite difficult for the U.S. to establish a sanction against Venezuela as they used to, to do in the past, for instance, against Cuba in 1962. It's, it was impossible. They tried, even Wednesday, last Wednesday, another meeting talking about Venezuela. Well, you know, we, are, we don't agree with the Constituent Assembly and blah, 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 blah. And they, they, got, they only got 14 votes. They need 18 at least. So they couldn't approve any, any statement against us. So they were defeated at, at, at the level of the Organization of American States, even though they control that organization, they, that organization is based in Washington, D.C. They were defeated. Uh, now, in terms of the, of the Constituent Assembly, as it was very difficult for us to talk with the opposition, the Venezuelan opposition, in terms of what we go, how, how we're going to agree to work, you know, to live together in this country. Because they didn't want to talk about that. They wanted to destroy us. Well, President Maduro decided to organize a uh, proposed election of the, of the National Assembly, the Constituent National Assembly, and it is based in the Constitution approved in, in 1999. Um, it had the support of all the institutions of Venezuela, the Supreme Court, the Electoral Council, <laughs> the right wing, in order to oppose to this election, organize uh, what they call they call a plebiscite in last 16 of July, without any kind of control. You know, you can get to the pool and vote and get to another one and vote again. Nobody knows who votes. They destroy all the control they have when, in the process after the election. They destroy anything. And then they claim, well, we got 7 million votes, 7 million, 600,000, something like that. Nobody knows how many votes they got because it, it's impossible. By the way, the, the right wing say that, you know, democracy uh, talk in Venezuela last uh, 16 of July and the president or the, uh, the governor of President Maduro let, had to pay attention to the Venezuelan people and the governor of Venezuela has to stop the Constituent Assembly. But the Constituent Assembly is going to have to be elected tomorrow, you know. We have a strong, very strong mass movement promoting the Constituent Assembly. It, it doesn't mean that uh, all the people that listen to the Constituent Assembly belong to the government, the Socialist Party. You know, there are different people participating. People with specific agendas, for instance, the Afro-Venezuelan, the LGBT, 
um, people that even the opposition, people from the opposition that they don't agree with the, the official policy of the opposition, they are participating. So it's a very open, a very huge uh, process of participation. We we have today, yesterday, all this week, and I think tomorrow we will be fighting against the violence because they want. We we didn't have anything against them to vote, you know, during the the the, the process they organized in the last 16th of July. Nobody cared about that. They did what they did. Nobody cared. But they don't want us to vote in the election. Our election is totally legal. It's totally clear. We have international accompanying people observing from different institutions that are not the government. Um, they don't want to the, the process to go. The U.S. don't want it. The president of Colombia said uh, yesterday that he, he won't accept this constituent assembly. So, you know, he's the president of Colombia. We're in Venezuela. What's the point? <laughs> um, president Trump said something similar, that he would approve some, I don't know, what kind of sanction, extraordinary, powerful, you know, Nobody, nobody knows what's he going to do. Yeah, I don't know. But we're going to have the election. We're going to have the election. What are we going to do? We are the Venezuelan people. We can't do what, what we want to do because we are in an independent country and we have the right to organize the election. This election and this constituent assembly means that the Bolivarian Revolution will get into a new phase. That's what they... That's why they are very concerned. We're, we're getting the new phase in which the right wing, for the right wing, it will be very difficult to do what they have been doing up to now. You know, killing people, going around the world, uh, conspiring against Venezuela in a very legal way, trying to sabotage the financial activities we organize, telling people not, not to invest in Venezuela, and organizing the violence on the street without any consequence, killing people on the street, burning public property, burning hospitals. So all the things is going to change with this Constituent Assembly. The Constituent Assembly will, one of the things that we're going to do in the Constituent Assembly is discuss in a commission established with the Constituent Assembly any case, every case in a specific way. There's the responsibility of the people involved in that case and the sanctions. That's what we're going to do in the Constituent Assembly. And we, we will establish new responsibility for, for the people of the, of the business sector that have been conspiring against the Venezuelan economic, economic uh, system. They will get sanctioned too from the Constituent Assembly. I'm going to give uh, uh, um, parliamentary uh, recognition at the level of the Constitution to all the social programs that will be developing during the last 18 years. And well, <laughs> So we hope that with all this discussion, we'll, be, we'll have like a better environment to develop the revolution. But of course, it won't be easy. We know that you know, on Monday, on Tuesday, Donald Trump will announce some kind of sanction and the right wing will get crazy and attack in Venezuela, discussing the Organization of American State. But you know, we're used to that. Uh, we're gonna do what we're gonna do. We were uh, in a revolutionary process. It is democratic. We want to respect the differences, but we also want the people that is in the opposition to respect the law. That's more or less the, the, the basic of this thing. Um, that's, what's, that's the process where, that we are getting into with the election of the Constituent Assembly tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Marcos Garcia, uh, for that brief um, overview of what the Constituent Assembly is about and what you propose to do. That's great. Before I call the next speaker, I just want to make one point. It is, of course, natural to imperialism. They demonize all their opponents, and especially if they are socialist countries. And following imperialism, the obedient media, including the so-called liberal press, the Guardian, Observer, everybody else follows it following which the average idiot, Trotskyites, the fake left, etc., follow and do exactly the same. They've been doing it in regard to 
to Syria, you know, how, how Bashar is a dictator and how he's doing. Somebody wrote a very good article, but I'd like to read to you one sentence, which is by way of an introduction. It's a spoof, but it's wonderful. It says, contrary to Lincoln regime propaganda, spouted by Stalinists like Karl Marx, The American rebel movement also includes social layers who are opposed to slavery. We just don't know who they are, but they're there. Stop Lincoln's barrel bombs. Does it remind you of the fake left in this country about Syria or Libya or something? There must be a democratic opposition. We can't locate it, but we're sure that there is, and these are the ones we support and these are the ones who will bring the permanent re re revolution and stop barrel bombs from Assad or Colonel Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein or who, whoever it, it may be. But it was lovely that they could actually say the Stalinist Karl Marx and, and Lincoln's barrel bombs because, because in the American Civil War, there really were a lot of bombs. And, and Lincoln had basically let loose his generals, you know, like, like General Grant who said, just do not take pity on these confederates. Just bomb them into non-existence. And we fully support in a revolutionary war, that's what happens. If you don't kill them, they kill you. Now, if you are into suicide and you want to kill yourself, that's fine. But no sensible person wants to, be, wants to go, go, go down. So that's, that's what they do. They demonize Cuba as a dictatorship. It's not just the imperialist um, establishment. It's not just the imperialist press. It's not just the Guardian, but even the fa fake left. They demonize Cuba, and it's great honor to have a representative of Cuba, come, 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 comrade uh, um, uh, uh, Jorge Luis Garcia. Uh, well, comrade, 